because you're gonna run out and you're going to be wiping your butt with pine cones, just like the rest of us. By now, I'm pretty sure that a lot of you have run into conspiracy theories or scary emails and text messages. The news has hyped things up and scared the ever-living tar out of you over, shall we say, the recent plague that has hit our nation. I'm here to offer the opposite of a black pill, a white pill, a little bit of positivity to take your mind off of this plague situation and ease all of your concerns. The number of people who have died of the plague that we're currently facing is about 3%, at least in China. Northern Italy, it's more like 7%. But who are the people that are dying? A simple percentage doesn't tell you the whole story. Are you going to die? Well, let's talk about your chances. 3%, 7%, scary numbers. Scary because out of 100 million people, that means 3 million, or 7 million, will die. The United States has 322 million people. If you're watching outside of the United States, I'm sorry, I'm a, an ignorant southern redneck and I only know things about the United States. I cannot speak for the syrup producers to the north of us or the taco manufacturers to the south. Excuse my southern ignorance. but. Using the United States as an intellectual framework to discuss this, those people who are dying in China don't translate well to the United States and possibly several other countries. The big thing that no one is talking about regarding the death rate for the plague that we are currently experiencing is that the vast majority of deaths are people 60 and up, predominantly male. Now why would a bunch of 60 plus men in China and Italy be dying? This plague that we're experiencing causes rapid onset pneumonia in some cases. I believe that approximately 20% of people get hospitalized and 6% of people end up in very serious condition, intubated and such, breathing on a machine. So. Why is it 60 plus men in these countries are dying at huge rates? Because they're decades long chain smokers who are getting a virus that causes rapid onset pneumonia. If your lungs are destroyed from smoking for decades and you get pneumonia, it only makes sense that there's a much higher chance of you not surviving, even with medical assistance. That's not to say that if you're 25 years old, you're immune to getting pneumonia and being killed from it. But if you're 25 years old and a non-smoker, the chances of your survival are extremely high, assuming that you haven't had AIDS for 10 years or some other similar immunocompromising infection. Your chances of survival are very, very high unless you're one of these old chain smokers. So, the bottom line is, it makes a lot of sense as to why the death rate is so high in these nations. In the United States, however, we have been on a kick against cigarettes and smoking for so long that I don't remember a time we didn't push for that. It became uncool to smoke cigarettes decades ago. <clears throat> and even the old chain smokers largely have stopped or at least tapered off a bit out of guilt. It's not cool to smoke in the United States. You stink. Your clothes stink. No one wants to be around the smell. No one wants their stuff to smell like smoke. No one wants to buy a car that smells like smoke. Smoking is almost a taboo in the United States at this point, and a lot of people have felt compelled to quit out of shame. Pure shame. It's not fun. And as we can see, it can literally kill you when the next magical global plague hits you. So I want you to think about the fact that the vast majority of deaths have been caused amongst people who are suffering from these problems. 
there are good explanations as to why they don't survive. Fortunately, that's not nearly as many people here as it is in the other places that have the really good headline producing death rates. So calm down, do your best to not get infected, but know that if you do get infected, there's a pretty good chance you're not going to get hospitalized. Only about 20% end up in the hospital at all. And there's an even better chance, a much better chance, that you're not going to die. Yes, it is serious. Yes, you need to take precautions. But some of this is getting really ridiculous. Another thing that bothers me rather greatly is that there are really stupid chain mails and texts and hoaxes and such going around saying things like the president is mobilizing the National Guard and military to force us into a two-week quarantine where everything is closed and locked down by invoking the Stafford Act. That has already been proven false by so many outlets at this point. Please don't buy into hysteria. There is no need to panic buy. If you go to the grocery store and you need paper towels and there are some on the shelf, get a reasonable amount. You don't need to stock up like the world is ending. And you know what? If the world was ending, buying a year worth of paper towels isn't going to help you at a year and a day. Because you're going to run out and you're going to be wiping your butt with pine cones. Just like the rest of us. So, it's better to approach all of this by gathering as much knowledge as you can, thinking about it critically, not trusting anything that you see or hear without more substantiation than, oh, I know someone and they posted this thing that this other person sent them. If it sounds kind of scammy or hoaxy, it probably is. Don't freak out. There is no need to freak out. If you take reasonable precautions, there's no reason that you should worry. But don't be like those idiots going out on spring break and going, oh, if I get the virus, it's all right as long as I get to party before I die. Yeah, kids, I don't know. Yeah, I used to be one. I probably would still be one. Anyway, it sounds like the computer is calling me from the back, so I should go deal with that. But I hope to bring a little bit of positivity and a little bit of critical reflection into your life with this video that puts you at a little bit of ease and makes it a little bit more difficult for you to buy into hysteria, hype, panic, and so on. Please don't panic. If, as long as you have your copy of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you'll be okay. The answer is 42. Goodbye.